Good morning, everybody. It's uh, great to be with you uh, on, at home, online, uh, here in church. It's great to be here. Let us begin. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 57 Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for my soul takes refuge in you. In the shadow of your wings will I take refuge until the storm of destruction has passed. I will call upon the Most High God, the God who fulfills his purpose for me. He will send from heaven and save me and rebuke those that would trample upon me. God will send forth his love and his faithfulness. I lie in the midst of lions, people whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and your glory over all the earth. They have laid a net for my feet. My soul is pressed down. They have dug a pit before me and will fall into it themselves. My heart is ready, O God. My heart is ready. I will sing and give you praise. Awake, my soul. Awake, harp and lyre, that I may awaken the dawn. I will give you thanks, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praise to you among the nations. For your loving kindness is as high as the heavens and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and your glory over all the earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Tender God, gentle protector in time of trouble, pierce the gloom of despair and give us, with all your people, the song of freedom and the shout of praise. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, we continue reading the story of David. Um, Saul has kind of declared his uh, intentions to kill David uh, in front of Jonathan. And this is, uh, this is what David does. Samuel, uh, 1 Samuel 21. David went on his way and Jonathan returned to town. David went to Nob. To Ahimelech the priest. Ahimelech was alarmed as he went out to greet David. What are you doing here all by yourself and not a soul with you? David answered Ahimelech the priest. The king sent me on a mission and gave strict orders. This is top secret. Not a word to a soul. I've arranged to meet up with my men in a certain place. Now what's there here to eat? Do you have, a, do you have five loaves of bread? Give me whatever you can scrounge up. I don't have any regular bread on hand, said the priest. I only have holy bread. If your men have not slept with women recently, it's yours. David said, none of us has touched a woman. I always do it this way when I'm on a mission. My men abstain from sex. Even when it's an ordinary mission, we do that. How much more on this holy mission? So the priest gave them the holy bread. It was the only bread he had. Bread of the presence that had been removed from God's presence and replaced by fresh bread at the same time. One of Saul's officials was present that day, keeping a religious vow. His name was Doag the Edomite. He was the chief of Saul's shepherds. David asked Ahimelech, Do you have a spear or sword of any kind around here? I didn't have a chance to grab my weapons. The king's mission was urgent and I left in a hurry. The priest said, the sword of Goliath, the Philistine you killed at Oak Valley, that's here. It's behind the heifer, wrapped in a cloth. If you want it, take it. There's nothing else here. Oh, said David, there's no sword like that. Give it to me. And at that, David shot out of there, running for his life from Saul. He went to Achish, king of Gath. When the servant of Achish saw him, they said, Can this be David, the famous David? Is this the one they sing at their dances? Saul kings by the kills by the thousand, David by the ten thousand. When David realised that he'd been recognised, he panicked. 
fearing the words from Akish, king of Gath. So right there, while they were looking at him, he pretended to go crazy, pounding his head on the city gate and foaming at the mouth, spit dripping from his beard. Akish took one look at him and said to his servants, Can't you see he's crazy? Why did you let him in here? Don't you think I have enough crazy people to put up with as it is without adding another? Get him out of here. So David got away and escaped to the cave at Adullam. When his brothers and others associated with his family heard where he was, they came down and joined him. Not only that, but all who were down on their luck came around, losers and vagrants and misfits of all sorts. David became their leader. There was about 400 in all. Then David went to Mizpah in Moab. He petitioned the king of Moab, Grant asylum to my father and mother until I find out what God has planned for me. David left his parents in the, in the care of the king of Moab. They stayed there all through the time David was hiding out. The prophet Gad told David, Don't go back to the cave, go to Judah. David did what he told him. He went to the forest of Hereth. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten. Those who seek God shall never go wanting. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten. God alone fills us. Acts 2, 22-36. So the, uh, the spirits descended on the disciples and they've been speaking in tongues and people were saying they were drunk. Uh, and of course they weren't, they were full of the spirit. And it continues on from there. Fellow Israelites, listen carefully to those, these words. Jesus, the Nazarene, a man thoroughly accredited by God to you. The miracles and wonders and signs that God did through him are common knowledge. This Jesus, following the deliberate and well thought out plan of God, was betrayed by man, who took the law into their own hands and was handed over to you, and you pinned him to a cross and killed him. But God untied the death ropes and raised him up, Death was no match for him. David said it all. <clears throat> I saw God before me for all time. Nothing can shake me. He's right by my side. I'm glad from the inside out, ecstatic. I pitch my tent in the land of hope. I know you'll never dump me in Hades. I'll never even smell the stench of death. You've got my feet on the life path with your face shining sun joy all around. Dear friends, let me be completely frank with you. Our ancestor David is dead and buried. His tomb is in plain sight today. But being also a prophet and knowing that God had solemnly sworn that a descendant of his would rule his kingdom, seeing far ahead, he talked of the resurrection of the Messiah. No trip to Hades, no stench of death. This Jesus, God raised up, and every one of us here is a witness to it then raised him to the heights at the right hand of God and receiving the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father, he poured out the Spirit he had just received. That is what you see and hear. For David himself did not ascend to heaven, but he did say, God said to my master, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a stool for resting your feet. All Israel know, all Israel then know this, there's no longer room for doubt. God made him master and messiah. This Jesus whom you killed on the cross. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. The Father has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church, he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. In him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, 
and through him God was pleased to reconcile all things. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you that you see so much wonder and potential in all of us. And because you love us so, you send your spirit down upon us. The gift of your Holy Spirit in our lives, Lord. I pray today that we recognize that gift, that we seek it out, that we attune to it and listen to it and hear your voice in our lives, guiding us in all our decisions this day. Lord, fill us with your spirit, your gift of love. Heavenly Father, we lift up all those students across the country this day, and especially those who worship here in St. Peter's, all those who are receiving their A-level results. We pray that even though COVID has affected uh, the studying and the exams, we pray that they've been able to achieve what they need to achieve. We pray that a peace is upon them as they receive them, whatever grades they receive, Lord. Be with them this day and with their families. Help them make wise choices about the future. Hold them in your loving presence this day. Heavenly Father, we lift up and ask for your blessing on our emergency services. Our first line responders. Those working in the hospitals or care homes. Our fire brigade, our police force, Lord. We pray for them. We ask that they are equipped, well managed, and have the energy to serve the people of this country to the best of their ability, Lord. Bless them this day. And Lord, we pray for breakfast club and evening meals, food parcels. We thank you for all the work that the volunteers do here, for all the energy that they put into it, in your name and not their own. For your glory and not theirs, Lord. Pray for continued blessing and renewal of this project, of this mission, to feed hungry people the manna that they need and deserve. Lord, be with us this day and watch over us. Amen. Holy and loving God, you dwell in the human heart and make us partakers of the divine nature in Christ, our great High Priest. Help us who remember your servant Jeremy Taylor to put our trust in your heavenly promises and follow a holy life in virtue and true godliness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Looking for the coming of his kingdom as our Saviour taught us so with longing we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us this morning. I uh, hope you have a pleasant day. Uh, I hope the weather's not too bad today. Uh, but take care and join us tonight at 5pm. God bless. See you later.